Hello, my name is Mike, and welcome to my Aesthetic Design for Power Distribution System mini course. If you're interested in uh, more of these type of content, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Please note that this is a two-part course in which this is the part one video in which I'm going to talk about some fundamental aesthetic knowledge. The playlist of this course can be found in the YouTube description below. With this mini course series, you will learn about what factors that affect the aesthetics of distribution systems, as well as factors that utilities would consider when investing in aesthetics of their system. This course is for system planners working in the utility companies or the regulatory bodies, as well as urban planners of new city developments. Please note that this course is not a beginner's course, and I highly recommend you to take my Distribution Power Engineering Fundamentals course or the Transmission and Distribution Line Infrastructure Fundamentals course to gain core knowledge of the distribution power poles that we are going to look at in this course. These two courses will provide you not only the prerequisite knowledge that you need to understand what I am talking about in this course better, but also provide you with essential industry knowledge that will no doubt help you propel your career to the next level. Also, upon completion of the courses, you will get a certificate of completion, which you can show to your current or potential employer that you have mastered these fundamental concepts. I've left the links to my two courses in the video description below, so be sure to check it out. All right then, so let's get started. Technical, environmental, visual, and aesthetic constraints affect the layout and installation of overhead power distribution systems. Overhead systems should be designed to blend in with the many sorts of environments in which they are installed, with a focus on reducing environmental constraints and annoyances. They must also be secured and dependable as well. The urban environment is made up of many different elements, uses, and functions. The shapes, dimensions, colors, and aesthetic qualities of street infrastructure differ dramatically from one location to the next. A lot of factors influence the aesthetics of an overhead system, including shape, volume, color, and even the distance between equipment and the people who are actually walking through these locations. Disproportion and uneven height and or shape draw the eye and detract from the overall aesthetics of the system. New aesthetic concepts combining all design characteristics as well as improved integration into various types of urban context are needed to improve the aesthetics of distribution systems. The many forms of urban layouts were inventoried in order to gain a better understanding of the existing approach to overhead system integration over the years with various research bodies. Technical rather than aesthetic issues govern pole height and location, cross arm pattern consistency, span length, and the presence of pole mounted uh, streetlights, and all of which are subject to system dependability and safety regulations. And as a result, rules for improved equipment integration and new equipment designs have been developed over time. The goal of the designs was to provide a unique set of solutions for overhead and overhead to underground systems, particularly through the introduction of new equipment that blends in with the built up environment visually. Keep in mind that the aesthetic integration of overhead systems is highly dependent on the factors as shown in front of you right now, which are the uh, things such as consistency with existing environment proportions, um, uh, equipment that are of uh, uniform size or regular shape, etc., consistent height and or shape, um, uh, minimized overall dimensions, as well as equipment uh, with matte uh, finishes. And these aspects are taken into account when developing concepts for various types of urban layouts. V-shaped conductor topologies have also been observed as being particularly suited to low density residential layouts, where the cross arms are small and curved and making them invisible and thus extremely aesthetic. And so another option worth considering is having vertical layouts for your power poles in your overhead um, circuits. Other possibilities for these surroundings include use of wood, steel, or composite poles, while concrete poles are preferred in upmarket residential districts. 
There is frequently minimal accessible space between the public right of way and the building for medium density layouts consisting of low rise residential complexes. And what I mean by low rise residential complexes are the ones that have two to three stories at most. And this means that the horizontal arrangement of cables on only one side of the pole satisfies the clearance criteria for power line and building safety while also allowing the pole to be placed in tight locations. Aesthetic coding project poles bases while also adding another appealing visual feature are also good. And because the front setbacks are usually broad, um, layouts consisting of medium to high density road dwellings allow more flexibility. And in addition, horizontal and vertical conductor arrangements are possible. And poles made of wood, steel, composite concrete, as well as decorative cladding and streetlights are all possibilities in terms of the use for aesthetics in nature. And given available space, uh, building distance from the public right of way and the uh, building volumes, uh, layouts consisting of high density apartment complexes and condominiums are ideally suited for a wide range of concepts and combinations. Given the density of buildings and lack of front setbacks typical of uh, downtown and outlying areas, a horizontal conductor arrangement on only one side of the street allows poles to be placed closer to the buildings without the need for specialized equipment that often clashes with other system components and features of the surrounding environments in commercial environments. Pole integration is substantially improved by matte finishes, composite materials or concrete with visible aggregates, as well as the installation of decorative streetlights and beautiful covers for pole bases. Other power system limitations exist in commercial districts and shopping malls. Large front setbacks are common in these designs and the buildings are typically set back from the public right of the way. And as a result, the greatest hurdle to the installation of overhead systems in these contexts is functional considerations. The advantages in terms of aesthetic integration, maintenance applications, and safety justify the high expense of some of the approaches that are going to be offered in this video. And some of these include um, improved accessibil accessibility in all times, uh, minimal property damage during equipment maintenance and replacement, improved aesthetics and uh, architectural integration, more in keeping with the various types of built-up environments, as well as longer service life through the use of new products specifically designed and adapted for greater resistance to wear and the natural elements. Now before we move on further into our course, let us take a brief look at our sponsor for this course. Now, as an engineer, especially when I first started in my career, I really felt overwhelmed the list of documents that we need to do on top of our technical work. Yet, these documents are very important in our career as it is the more prominent thing that displays our credibility to management and to our clients if we so decide to become an engineer consultant, which is where the real actual money is. Now, I don't have these tools available to me when I first started my career, but now PM Milestone has created this package of all the professional templates that you need so that you can focus more on the technical aspect of your career. These templates are tried and tested by real professionals, so you should feel confident in using them in your career to present your best foot forward in front of your manager or clients. These templates are also updated periodically, and I think their last update is just 2021, so they are not going to be out of date or context to the present times, as these people are serious in getting the most professional product to meet your needs. They are also very confident of the quality of these templates too, as they offer you their product completely risk-free with 60-day money-back guarantee if you are not satisfied with it. So. If you are interested in this product and would also like to support me in creating these courses on YouTube in the future, please check out their product using the link in my video description titled Course Sponsor PM Milestone 2.0. Now, the urban environment is uh, made up of many different types of designs, volume colors, and appearances. The surroundings include um, electrical distribution networks, which add to the various differences. Aesthetics is a term that describes a sophisticated sense of taste and beauty. And this beauty is mostly determined by the values communicated in a given location at a given moment. 
Electrification, for example, represented progress and modernity in its early phases. It signaled the shift from a bygone period to a new one brimming with possibilities. Today, however, city people are demanding aesthetic changes to existing distribution facilities due to the high quantity of wires, pole doubling, pole positioning in areas of interest, as well as the size of some particular poles. Advising on a general strategy to improving the aesthetics of a power distribution system necessitates placing oneself in the shoes of the observer and asking a series of questions such as, what is the perception of the various planes in the landscape? How are height, length, and depth views as well as directional lines of force being perceived by the people who are living or working or just generally using this piece of land? So, which is the most important point to consider? Well, the directional line of forces and the primary vanishing lines are some of the key visual components in, in, in terms of considering the urban designs. Now, the linear divisions of the components of a picture are known as line of force, and vanishing lines are directional force lines that give the image depth. And a, company, uh, a common example of a vanishing line is a road that stretches the horizon. Rhythm, shapes, areas of interest, and colors are some of the additional aspects to this. Now, in a scattered urban context, the horizontal line controls the vast majority of viewpoints. The tone is determined by the sky region crossing by the horizon. And the vertical line, on the other hand, typifies that perspective in a congested metropolitan setting. The dominating line is emphasized or diminished by what we call disappearing lines. And the expanse or landscape stretching up before them is defined by a sequence of viewpoints experienced by onlookers who are in this uh, visiting or living in this land. For evaluating the aesthetics of overhead distribution systems, the observers has an endless number of viewpoints. There are an unlimited number of ways to improve the aesthetics of that system. This necessitates making a decision for the sake of this activity. It is desirable to take a public rather than private attitude when considering aesthetics. A view of the building's interior, for example, will not be evaluated, and instead we will focus on public spaces such as sidewalks, highways, and boulevards, etc. In general, a method centered on better design or aesthetics is not the most optimized as it focuses too much on the core topic. In this case, the component becomes the only thing that matters, resulting in results that not necessarily what you want. Excessive worry on upgrading pole materials and design, for example, may divert all focus away from appropriating putting the pole in the surroundings. Integration should be viewed as a method that favors global analysis based on environment composition principles with the sole goal of embedding the, tr uh, the, 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 the topic into that environment. If the main goal is to position the poles near the building facades for a blended look, a thorough research of a building architecture along a commercial street would be pointless in this case. Instead, all of the buildings and other things that potentially interfere with the poles should be considered in the bigger picture. Aesthetic development of distribution systems necessitates their integration into the surroundings while keeping proportions in mind. And this technique does not place a strong emphasis on the subject and instead attempting to give the observer more of a background that is not dominated by the distribution system, as is frequently the case. When we analyze the ratio of building distance, or D, to average building height or H, these integration principles become evident. This D-H ratio is used to determine how well urban components are balanced. And the diagram in front of you right now depicts a situation where the D-H ratio is larger than 1. And this is viewed as what we call an open environment. And where would it uh, be larger than 1? Well, that's when the D or the building distance is going to be larger than the average building height. And the electrical distribution equipment, as shown in the drawing, integrates quite well with this sort of landscape, posing no major limits on pole placement. And because of the perception of clearance and openness between components, no matter what sort of equipment is employed, the area can typically support that equipment. And what I mean by equipment, I mean like buildings, other urban infrastructure, vegetations, etc. Contrastingly, when the DH ratio is smaller than 1, the environment is referred to what as a closed environment. 
and this sort of environment or atmosphere is depicted in the sketch shown in front of you right now. This time, the electrical infrastructure does not give the same feeling as an open environment and merely adds to the volume already there. When transformers are installed on the poles and service uh, boxes are added to the existing components, the effect of these congestions would amplify. The overall size of the poles and surrounding area limit the placement and kind of equipment that may be installed, but they can also assist to hide the equipment. And in situations like these, aesthetic equipment integration becomes extremely important as a result as a method of reducing the visual impact of overhead installations. The influence of the DH ratio on the visual integration of distribution systems is clear. It is not, however, the sole aspect to consider. Street width, greenery, urban furniture, and other elements should all be considered when deciding where and what kind of equipment to install. And we will discuss that in a later video. So as mentioned in the beginning of this course, I highly recommend you to take my distribution power engineering fundamentals course or the transmission and distribution line infrastructure fundamentals course to gain core knowledge of the distribution power poles that we're looking at in this course. Now these courses will provide you not only the prerequisite knowledge that you need to understand what I'm talking about in this course better, but also provide you with essential industry knowledge that will no doubt help you propel your career to the next level. Also, upon completion of the courses, you will get a certificate of completion, which you can show to your current or potential employer that you have mastered these fundamental concepts. I have left the links to my two courses in the video description below, so be sure to check it out. Also, this video is part of a playlist that contains all the videos for this aesthetic design for power distribution system course. So if you're interested in viewing the entire course, please visit the playlist link that I've left in the video description below. Thank you for watching and please like and, uh, this video and subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you in my other videos and courses.